Welcome back. The objectives of this video are to introduce the basic sine and cosine curves. We'll introduce amplitude of sine and cosine and show how the amplitude impacts the vertical shrinking and stretching of those graphs. We'll also introduce period of sine and cosine and show how that impacts the horizontal stretch of the sine and cosine curves. So in our first objective here, we're going to take a look at two different equations, y equals a sine of bx okay, and y equals a cosine of bx. And right now we're just going to have a and b equal to 1. And we'll talk about what a and b are momentarily. And we're going to evaluate each of these at 0, pi over 2, pi, 3 pi over 2, and 2 pi. You may recognize these. These are in radians. And these are the quadrantals on the unit circle. So these are the same as our quadrantals. So we are evaluating our sine and cosine at the quadrantals on the unit circle. Just the, the straightforward a y equals the sine of x. Well, the sine on our unit circle, the sine of 0 is 0. And then we're going to take a look at this at pi over 2, pi, 3 pi over 2, and 2 pi. So the sine of 0 is 0. The sine of pi over 2, think about your unit circle, that is 1. The sine of pi, so the y coordinate at pi, again, is 0. The y coordinate at 3 pi over 2 is negative 1. And the y coordinate back at 2 pi at 2 pi again is 0. So our sine curve looks something like that. That is a picture of our sine curve, and we evaluate it at these five different points around the unit circle. And if you think about our unit circle, you will realize then, as we continue around the unit circle again, we will repeat this same wave. So the sine, its period, goes from 0 to 2 pi, or its period is one trip around the unit circle. And we'll repeat this process for the cosine. y equals a cosine of bx. We're going to let a and b equal to 1 right now. So we're just graphing y equals the cosine of x. And again, these are in radians. And we're going to evaluate at, at 0 and pi over 2 and pi and 3 pi over 2 and 2 pi. And the cosine at 0, our x coordinate on our unit circle at 0 is 1. And if we think about our unit circle, we go up to 90 degrees or pi over 2. The x coordinate of pi over 2 is 0. And at pi, our x coordinate is negative 1. And 3 pi over 2, we're back at 0 again. And at 2 pi, we go back to 1. So our cosine curve is going to graph something like that. And again, just like the sine curve, if 
we go through the unit circle, we realize that this pattern is going to repeat. So this is one period of the sine curve, and if I was to do this again, this would just continue to repeat every pi over two. So let's take a look at the domain and range for each of these. Our domain for our sine curve, here's our sine curve, y equals the sine of x. Our domain, well we can put any x values we want in there. They can be negative, they can be positive. So our domain extends from negative infinity to infinity. Our range, however, that just goes from negative one to one. Our x-intercepts, well, our x-intercepts occur at the origin, zero, zero. They occur at pi and zero and two pi and zero. And our y-intercept, that is also the origin. And there are some notes down here that it's an odd function and it's symmetric about the origin. For the cosine curve, our domain, still the same. All real numbers, negative infinity to infinity. Our range, just like sine, is negative one, one. In fact, some of you may notice that this is the sine curve, but just shifted. Our x-intercepts are at pi over two, zero, and three pi over two, zero. Our y-intercept is at zero, one. And that is an even function. So now let's take a look at at how a change in A, or our amplitude, impacts our, our sine curve and our cosine curve. So we're gonna, e again, evaluate this at zero pi over two pi, three pi over two and two pi. Again, these are radians, so if you're trying this on your calculator, make sure you have this in radian mode, okay, on your calculator. And also, your x values, you can put in your, in your calculator, you can evaluate from like 0 to 2 pi or 0 to 4 pi. You can have that as your, your x min and x max. Your scale, you can count by pi over 2's. You can put that into your calculator. So something to keep in mind. So we're going to go ahead and sketch this though. So the sine, 2 times the sine of x. Well, the sine of zero is still zero, so two times zero is zero. But when I check pi over two, now we have two times the sine of pi over two. Well, pi over two, the sine of pi over two was one, so we have two times one, so now we're up at two. Pi was zero, then three pi over two, well, our sine curve was negative one, but now we're doubling that, so that's gonna be two times negative one. So now we're down at negative two, and then at two pi with zero, two times zero is zero. So our curve has a similar shape, but it's taller. I kind of missed there at, at two pi. So our amplitude is two units now. We've got two units in height here and two units in height. So we've, we've kind of done a vertical stretch of our sine curve. We've stretched that vertically. We've multiplied that by two. If we multiplied it by three, it'd be three. We'd go up to three, it'd be three higher. Okay, if we did one half, well, one would become one half. That would be a vertical shrink. So we're gonna catch, sketch the cosine curve here. Y equals one half cosine of X. So our amplitude here is one half. Our multiplier is one half. We're only gonna go one half as high. And we've seen this kind of thing before 
with uh, would we graft our polynomials and graph quadratics. So we're going to ev again evaluate at 0 and at pi over 2 and pi and 3 pi over 2 and 2 pi. And I'm going to put my scales in right away. 1, 2, 3. So we're going to go to negative 3 into 3. And we'll go ahead and graph the cosine curve. So y equals 1 half cosine of x. So 1 half cosine of 0 is 1 half times 1. So we're going to be just at 1 half. At pi over 2, we're at 0. At pi, we're going to be at negative 1 half. At 3 pi over 2, we're going to be back at 0 and at 1 half. So with the amplitude of 1 half, we have vertically shrunk our curve. It's got the sh same shape, but now our amplitude is not as high. We're not going all the way up to 1. We're only going to 1 half. Whereas if we graph 3 cosine of x, and again at these points, 0, pi over 2, pi, 3 pi over 2, and 2 pi, so 3 times the cosine of 0, so 3 times 1, at, pi, at 0 we're going to be up at 3. Pi over 2 we're still going to be at 0, but then at pi we're going to be at negative 3. And 0 and at 2 pi we're going to be back at 3. So our cosine curve now is going to look something like that. So this is the point, um, you know, pi comma negative 3. So we input pi, the cosine of pi, equals negative 1, but we have 3 times the cosine of pi, so 3 times negative 1. So that's how we get negative 3 there. And again, that pattern would continue to repeat for each period, for each cycle. And that leads us to objective 3. We're going to actually change the period, which will create a horizontal stretch. So our period so far has been 2 pi. Now recall that functions that behave in a repetitive or cyclic manner are periodic. The period is the duration necessary to complete one cycle. So sine and cosine, as I've said, repeat every 2 pi. So our period, make sure you've got this in your notes, is 2 pi over b. Now our standard form here, y equals a sine of bx and y equals cosine of bx, okay, the b impacts our period. So a was the amplitude, impacts the amplitude, that vertical stretch or shrink, and b is going to impact the period. And that's going to change how we move horizontally along the x-axis. That's going to create a horizontal stretch or a horizontal shrink. So if our b value is between 0 and 1, we're going to have a horizontal stretch. And if b is greater than 1, we've got a horizontal shrink. Okay, so a stretch means it's going to take 2 pi. It's going to stretch it out over a much longer period. And a shrink, we're going to squeeze that. So I'm going to go ahead and graph uh, y equals sine of x again. And we'll evaluate again at all those critical points. Uh, our, our same 5. Evaluate at uh, 0, pi over 2, pi, 3 pi over 2, and 2 pi. Those five critical points. So sine of 0 is 0, and we'll take a look at pi over 2, pi, 3 pi over 2, and 2 pi. 
So evaluating the sine of x, the sine of 0 is 0. The sine of pi over 2 is 1. The sine of pi is 0. The sine of 3 pi over 2 is negative 1. And the sine of 2 pi is 0. And connecting all my points with a nice smooth sine curve, there's my sine curve. But now I'm going to graph y equals the sine of x over 2, or y equals the sine of 1 half x, where our b is 1 half. So our period is 2 pi over b, or 2 pi over 1 half. So now our period is equal to 4 pi. So if our period is 4 pi, we're going to still split it into our different fourths. But we're going to have our five critical points. And now we're going to evaluate at 0 and 1 pi, 2 pi, 3 pi, and 4 pi. So we're going to still break it up into fourths and, gra and graph our five critical points. So I am going to have to make some changes here to my notes because I need some more room. So our four critical points. Dividing my period into four parts, I'm going to count by pi's, starting at 0. And 1 pi, 2 pi, 3 pi, and 4 pi. So I'm going to split this equally into four equal parts. And we'll evaluate that, which means I am going to need a longer axis here. So we'll stretch that out. And we'll go ahead and graph. So the sine of 0, 1 half the sine of 0 over 2 is still 0. But my first point, when I calculate the sine of 1 half pi, I'm going to be at my first critical point. I'm going to be here at 1. And then when I get to 2 pi, I'm going to be back at 0. As you can see, halfway through the cycle, I'm at the same point as I was halfway before, but I'm now stretched out. So I have another point at 3 pi. So I'm going to be down at negative 1. And then when I finally get out to 4 pi, I'm going to get back to 0. So my points, the graph is still the same, but now I've stretched that out. So And that's now going to repeat every 4 pi. So sine of 1 half x is periodic every 4 pi now, and not every 2 pi. There's some examples of period and amplitude and the standard graphs of the sine and cosine curves. And we'll get some more practice with this when I see you in class.